Hello, everyone. I'm Vera Pritkova. I'm a research and application scientist uh, in the drug discovery team at CCDC. And today I'm going to give you an overview uh, of the discovery suit. So um, our discovery suit is comprised of several uh, main packages. Uh, the first one being gold. Um, gold is our protein ligand docking uh, package uh, that can be used for docking and virtual screening. Uh, then we, you have access to CSD cross miner. Uh, it's a tool that allows to interrogate the CSD and the PDB for common interaction patterns. If uh, one doesn't have uh, access to the structure of the protein, uh, one can follow the ligand-based virtual screening workflow, and that also has access to um, the CSD confer generator and the ligand overlay. Uh, all of the above tools are available through our GUI interface, but also one can use um, CSD Python API. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, you can run all of those workflows in the programmatic way. And also you can use the field-based ligand screener uh, through the Python API. Um, we also have a set of the knowledge-based tools uh, based on, our, um, on the CSD. Um, that includes uh, Superstar, so you can analyze, predict, and understand protein and ligand interactions using Superstar. So where would our tools fit uh, inside the drug discovery pipeline? So in the stage of the drug uh, target selection, you can uh, locate and characterize protein ligand binding sites with uh, fragment hotspot maps, so you can assess uh, pocket drug ability. Uh, then at the hit identification stage, you can use uh, gold and cross miner and other tools to uh, do the structure and ligand based virtual screening. So you can mine the CSD and the PDB as well as any other uh, database for common interaction patterns and scaffold hops. Um, then at the hit to lead optimization stage, uh, you can assess how changes affect binding, also using gold and cross miner. And at the lead optimization stage, uh, using several tools, uh, several tools, you can check the impact of uh, changes with uh, docking post prediction. Um, so uh, let me now dive into uh, each separate tool and uh, show you how uh, it works. Let us start with GOLD. Uh, GOLD stands for Genetic Optimization for Ligand Docking. It is a genetic algorithm for uh, docking flexible ligands into protein binding sites. Uh, some of the key aspects of GOLD in, uh, include its uh, versatility. It has four different scoring functions, which means that you can have um, a greater chance of finding a protocol that suits your particular system. It can deal with the uh, key water molecules, um, rotating, translating, and turning them on and off during the docking run. It also has several features for dealing with um, protein flexibility. That includes rotatable side chains, uh, soft potentials, and ensemble docking. Um, it also contains several different uh, constraints uh, that includes hydrogen bond constraint, hydrophobic regions, scaffolds, and similarity constraints. Um, one can use uh, gold either through the GUI interface from command line or from the Python API interface. Also, in uh, one of our uh, latest releases, we make a gold available um, uh, to run on the cloud computing resources as well as um, uh, local clusters. So there are usually when comparing uh, various docking packages, there are publications that try to run them on uh, uh, one system or several systems uh, and see uh, what is the best performance. Uh, typically, Gold prefer, performs really well uh comparing to other docking packages uh one of our best performing scoring functions is chemplp and we use that as a default scoring function since it's um, both best performing and uh is uh, the fastest one 
uh, we allow to um, make uh, modifications to the gold setup uh, in the Python API. Um, so all the constraints and configurations could be set up uh, through Python API. But also we allow for various different integrations of gold. And recently we made available uh, the NIME uh, workflow in gold. So one can start with um, a set of uh, ligands uh, in 2D, so in smiles, uh, and then convert them to three-dimensional structures and run gold using um, such uh, a workflow. To provide you an example uh, of how gold works, uh, I'm showing here a recent publication from uh, Tel Aviv University. Here, the virtual screen identified potential drugs to repurpose against COVID-19. Here, the Campbell database of drugs at various stages of clinical trials was filtered and the resulting library screened in silico using non-covalent and covalent methods. Gold was used in uh, non-covalent virtual screening and identified 21 hits. The lead compounds were, went on to be tested um, by protease inhibitor activity assay as part of the COVID moonshot initiative. And this found one compound, um, a molecule in phase two for treatment uh, of COPD and identified by gold. So it showed 37% uh, inhibition at a 50 micromolar concentration. So this uh, is one of the applications that we offer. Uh, moving on to the other ones, uh, CSD CrossMiner uh, is the result of a collaboration between CCDC and Roche. Um, it is an interactive uh, tool for pharmacophore based searches of structural databases. So this is the tool to mine the uh, PDB and the CSD. It allows to retrieve valuable information that can be used um, in a drug design project. We provide um, databases ready for searching containing protein ligand binding sites from uh, the entire PDB. Um, you can also have the ability to search your own structural database. The databases uh, we have are annotated with information related to the crystallographic structure. Uh, for example, the CSD ref code, um, EC number, PDB code, type of molecule, resolution, protein target, and many other annotations. Those annotations can be used not only to retrieve information about the structure, but also to filter the results. Um, for example, to retrieve only specific types of structures that match the pharmacophore query. Um, moving on to the applications, uh, CSD CrossMiner is a very powerful tool in drug discovery process. So it allows to determine common, common protein binding sites uh, in PDB structures. Uh, it lets uh, you determine structural motives, um, that are able to interact with similar binding sites and evaluate which ligand motifs have similar protein interaction patterns. If that lets you shed some light into the cross pharmacology between protein targets, as well as into the selectivity of bioactive small molecules um, and its further implications to toxicity and adverse reactions. Um, Accessing all this information about protein and small molecule interactions allows to generate new ideas. For example, how to design novel motives that mimic established ligands. Um, this can help to move away from an already patented chemical space or to improve physical chemical and pharmacokinetic properties. How do you st uh, build a pharmacophore uh, within a CSD cross minor? So each entry in the database uh, of molecular structures are annotated with features that can be defined as an ensemble of steric and electronic features that characterize a protein or a small molecule. Uh, those features are defined using SMARTS patterns and are stored in feature database. 
So the smart patterns um, and the feature definitions are user editable. This means that they can be tailored or extended by the user. And in addition, uh, new feature definitions can be easily created and applied in the fly. For example, you can have um, a charge ligand, um, then the user must come up with a smart pattern matching uh, the feature type. Uh, the pharmacophore query is defined using some types of feature with a tolerance sphere, where the radius of the sphere reflects the uncertainty in the position. And the larger is the sphere, the larger the uncertainty is allowed for a match. Um, as for features, pharmacophore points can be either single points or directional, uh, which means that they're defined by two points. Then the pharmacophore query can be further customized by defining the nature of the pharmacophore point and by applying the constraints. Um, so let me provide you uh, one example of an application. This is a publication where the authors were interested in the heterocyclic ring system produced by the three-component gropke blackburn Ganymede reaction as a possible pharmaceutical scaffold. They designed and synthesized a library of uh, substitute products and solved the structure of one to confirm its structural properties. Here, um, CSD CrossMiner was used to identify binding patterns, as uh, uh, it is seen both in their obtained crystal structures and in the literature, to find uh, similar structural motives in the PDB and to generate uh, new ideas for further lead optimization and scaffold hopping. So those uh, two tools that I just described, both uh, could be used in the structure-based drug design, but if you are missing uh, the protein structure, you can go with the ligand-based virtual screen work framework. And I'm going to show you um, uh, in a few brief details uh, how this works. So the uh, virtual screen workflow uh, works as follows. We start uh, with a set of known active ligands uh, with the assumption that uh, these actives bind to the same pocket of the protein and have a common binding mode. Then we generate a set of diverse, highly probable conformers uh, using a conformer generator. Then we generate plausible ligand overlay hypothesis from these conformers. Um, which are plausible putative common binding modes. Um, this ligand overlay hypothesis can then be used um, to do the screening of a larger library of ligands uh, using the field-based uh, ligand screener that we provide uh, in Python API. To go over some of those steps, uh, this is the brief description of the CSD conformer generator methodology. Here, the confirmers are generated based on the data stored in the CSD, and the CSD data uh, allows us to uh, construct uh, realistic low-energy confirmers of small molecules. For the ligand overlay methodology, um, we use these confirmers um, to generate the overlay, um, and then th here the problem is underdetermined. Therefore, many different overlays can be constructed. Um, then we filter those overlays, optimize them, and those overlays can be used as the entry point for the field-based ligand screener. So the ligand uh, field-based ligand screener uh, creates a similarity field. It creates the fitting points uh, adds excluded volume and screens uh, the ligand conformational ensembles against the overlay query uh, and scores this. Um, and they, then it returns the ones that best match the query. As an example uh, of uh, this workflow, uh, in this work, authors used the CSD ligand overlay to develop pharmacophores that may inform new bio-inspired competitive inhibitors with uh, pharmaceutical implications. Here, PAPA is, in a, is a substrate for two catalysts involved in the shikimate pathway, uh, which is essential for plant and fungi metabolism. 
So the researchers uh, performed a literature survey of 28 BAPA derivatives and then analyzed the selectivity and affinity of the compounds using molecular docking, uh, pharmacophore prediction, molecular dynamic simulations, and uh, binding free energy calculations. As part of the process, they used the CSD ligand overlay tool to determine the pharmacophoric groups of the selected ligands. Specifically, they generated conformers for each PEP derivative using the conformer generator tool and then performed a pharmacophoric prediction using the ligand overlay application. Here, the researchers optimized the overlay results based on volume and hydrogen bonding, as well as hydrophobic coplanarity and internal energy scores. So this was an application of the um, ligand overlay uh, and uh, a field-based uh, ligand screening workflow. I would like to show you the last uh, chapter of uh, our discovery workflow. Um, we try to extract the information from the CSD and the PDB to uh, better inform the uh, drug discovery process. And for that, uh, we offer the full interaction maps. Um, this is built on top of the library of intramolecular information that we call ISOSTAR. Here, the data are derived from the CSD and the PDB. This allows to gain immediate insight into the interaction preferences of your small molecule. So you can obtain the evaluation of intramolecular packing of a crystal structure using the all interaction types. Another tool we offer uh, in terms of our knowledge-based tool is called Superstar. Uh, Superstar allows to put the probe uh, inside the uh, protein binding site and analyze the interaction preferences for the protein binding site. So we can extract uh, the knowledge-based information from the CSD and the PDB to find where uh, small molecule donors, acceptors, or hydrophobic groups would bind inside this uh, binding site. Those maps constructed uh, in Superstar can then visualized, be visualized in Hermes, our protein visualizer. As an example of the application of Superstar, I wanted to show you this uh, publication. Here, the authors uh, use CSD discovery to evaluate the aldose reductase inhibiting uh, properties of synthesized green fluorescent protein model. Uh, uh, so they modeled the compounds uh, and their analogs. Um, the aldose reductase inhibitors are used to treat uh, complications associated with diabetes. Um, here, the authors used the GFP uh, chromophore model to synthesize uh, imidazolones and then measured the in vitro ALR2 inhibitory activity. So they used, um, uh, so they completed the docking experiments with gold on 13 compounds into seven different protein structures obtained from the PDB. And this helped them uh, determine the best pose for each experimental ligand. Then they used the superstar, uh, where author generated interaction maps within the protein binding sites uh, based on the crystal structures in the PDB. For example, they were able to visualize the knowledge-based protein ligand interaction area within the active site of the protein. And they were able to verify the role of the hydrophobicity in the experimental ALR2 inhibitory activity in six of the 13 experimental ligands and analogs. This completes my uh, brief overview of the discovery. With this, I'd like to thank you. If you have any questions or if you think that you would like to um, communicate with us or collaborate on any of the projects, uh, feel free to reach me. And this is my email address if that's necessary. Thank you for your attention.